So all of this uh, spatial stuff, and then um, coming back to Atmananda, we've been sort of talking about lower witness, higher witness, um, as, as has how his teaching progressed. You um, would say that the designation of lower witness, and a lot of these issues um, in lower witness come up as uh, a defining characteristic of memory. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. Okay, there's a couple of ways that um, Atmananda talks about this distinction between lower and higher witness. He doesn't talk a lot about it, just like in the preface mm -hmm. of Atmadarshan. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't go into great detail about it, but there are two things that are quite um, distinctive about it. One is that you use it when you're trying to figure out what stuff out there is, or what the body is, or what the sense of embodied self is. So that's one thing. The higher witness is when you're looking at what awareness is. Right. When you're no longer asking about what things external to awareness are, you're asking, you're sort of investigating awareness itself. So it's more subtle, so higher mm -hmm. witness. Mm -hmm. Another way to think about the distinction is <coughs> lower witness assumes that the witness has memory. That, that memory's not an arising, but it's a function of the witness. It's part of the mm -hmm. witness's operation. Mm -hmm. Higher witness doesn't make that assumption. It looks at memory as just another thing, like a right. flash of blue. Right. Memory is being a thought that's occurring and arising that's occurring at right. the moment. Right. Like among one, um, one among many. Mm -hmm. And so the lower witness, it's, it's almost like a uh, teaching point. The lower witness does its job because you're looking at, you're looking, you're at a point where it seems like the body or the sense of self is separate from awareness. Like the awareness sees this or that I, I'm something that awareness operates inside of. So I have to be outside of awareness, because mm -hmm. I think awareness is inside me. Mm -hmm. you know? So um, Atmananda says that you can remember the sense of being embodied. Embodiment seems like something you can remember feeling or being, like I've really felt like separate and embodied, like a bodied sense of self. You mm -hmm. know? And so it arises, this, this memory arises, um, it's witnessed. The witness is that which keeps track of everything that arises, mm -hmm. almost like a video camera notion of awareness. You mm -hmm. know, it remembers everything, and so here's the here's the point that he makes with it. If if one can allow that the witness does this, and so far, if you think a body is real, it's no big stretch to think the witness can remember stuff. Mm -hmm. So you use this memory of capacity of the witness to do this. If I can remember the sense of being embodied, if it's something that arises in memory, it's recorded in memory, then it's something t that must have appeared in the first place. Right. Yeah, it, create, right? it, it creates a dualism. It creates some place or other time. or Right. And mm -hmm. let's say that the other time was just as tangible as this memory seems, even more mm -hmm. tangible. Mm -hmm. Well, it, if, a ro if it arises in memory, it has to have arisen first as a, as a sense, right? Mm -hmm. If it arises, then it can't be that which um, it can't be that which is the subject of these things. It can't be me. It was right. an arising to me. You know, first I say um, the world is everything that's not me, and then later I see that the world is everything that is me. Right. right. So it seems like it was something as an arising object witnessed by me. Mm -hmm. The sense of separation. Mm -hmm. If it's an arising object witnessed by me, it can't be the identity of who I am. Mm -hmm. Because many things right. are, are, you know... It would be by definition separate. By definition separate. And it goes away, because that sense of a, a separate embodiment is not always there. Mm -hmm. Deep sleep punctuates it. Mm -hmm. You know, a wonderful sunrise, you mm -hmm. know, it can't be there while those things are there. Mm -hmm. You know, no, there's no one arising that's always there. Mm -hmm. So that one was there as an arising. So the mere fact that I can remember it proves that it was an arising in the first place. Mm -hmm. So that's using the memory function of witness, witnessing, to disprove the reality of the separate sense of self, the embodiment. So you're the idea is you're looking at what this embodiment is, and you're using a notion of the witness to displace it, you know, to, to deconstruct it. And it works well. You can see that, that the sense of embodiment is an arising. Right. You know, it's a sense that not every people say, oh, it's a very fundamental one. It is. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, it comes and goes. Mm -hmm. And one of the notions of reality in Advaita Vedanta is that which can't be negated and that which doesn't come and go. Right. 
So and all experience comes and goes. So yeah, separate experiences come and go, and mm -hmm. one of them is that own sense of embodiment. So it right. can't be there all the time. Right.